Again, there's, there's, there's a place for service. But Mary here has, has the right priority. Sitting at his feet, hearing him. Our service to the Lord should flow out of our worship of the Lord. Right? We, we sit at his feet, we worship him, or like Mary does in chapter 26 of Matthew, if you want to turn back there, you know, she, she, she pours out extravagantly on him this, uh, this great act of adoration and love and, and worship, and then our service flows out of that. And, and, but the priority, the big priority, the main priority is worshiping him, and then everything else flows from, from that aspect of our relationship with him so turn back to matthew 26 and look at verse 12 look at what jesus says in verse 12 for in pouring this fragrant oil on my body she did it for my burial mary did this for his burial she anointed his body for his burial so the fragrance of the oil was on jesus now it's filled the house The fragrance was on Jesus when he goes to Gethsemane, where he prays and where he's arrested. The fragrance is on Jesus when he's brought before the religious leaders and is condemned by them. The fragrance is on Jesus when he's brought to Pontius Pilate early in the morning. The fragrance is on Jesus when he's taken to the cross and crucified. He has this fragrance on him for burial. Now listen, please, give me your attention. Jesus told the disciples four separate times that he's going to be delivered up and crucified and resurrected. But Mary was the only one who listened to what Jesus said. She's the only one who listened. None of the disciples were listening to Jesus. Mary was the only one listening. And so she was aware of, of what was happening. She was aware of what was about to happen to Jesus. She was prepared for it. And so that's why she anointed his body for his burial. She understands this is the fourth time he said he's going to be crucified. Now he's saying he's going to be crucified in two days on Passover. And so she anoints him for his burial. The disciples were not listening to Jesus. They were not listening to what Jesus plainly said. It's not like he's speaking in parables that they don't understand. I mean, he very clearly says, after two days is the Passover, and they're going to deliver me up to be crucified. And they're not listening to what he said. Instead, the disciples have convinced themselves that Jesus will establish his kingdom. They've got like their own narrative going on in their head of what they think Jesus is going to do in Jerusalem, they believe he's going to go there. Somehow he's going to overthrow the Roman government and he's going to establish his kingdom on earth. Any moment that's going to happen. Crucifixion was not part of their narrative. Crucifixion was not the outcome they expected. And so what happened? You know the story. When Jesus is arrested in Gethsemane, what did the disciples do? They all split. They flee. They abandon him. And then After Jesus was crucified, the disciples became disillusioned. On the road to Emmaus, the morning of the resurrection, Jesus talks to the two disciples that are on the road to Emmaus. They don't know Jesus is resurrected. They don't know they're talking to Jesus. And they refer to Jesus as a prophet. We thought he was a a, a prophet. They no longer refer to him as the Messiah. They've downgraded him to prophet. And they say to Jesus, without knowing it's Jesus, well, we thought he was the one, but he's not the one. They crucified him. We thought he was the Messiah, but then they killed him. They crucified him. So I I guess we had the wrong guy. They're disillusioned. And they're disillusioned because things did not go the way they thought they would go. But they did go the way God said they would go. (laughs) Do you hear me? Things did not go the way they thought they would go, but they did go the way that God said they would go. And if they would have just listened to what God said, if they would have just listened listened to what Jesus said, they would have known. We need to listen carefully. 
to what the Bible says in black and white or red and white and what it says to us plainly. And, and here, here's, here's what I see some Christians do, and I say this, I say this in love. Instead of, instead of looking at what the Word of God says and searching the Scriptures and, and, and seeking answers and direction from the Word of God, some I see uh, create this narrative in their head of this desired outcome that they have in their mind. This is what I want to happen. This is what I'm hoping happens. And they get locked in on this desired outcome that they have created in their mind instead of looking to the Word of God for direction and answers. Or the other thing I see sometimes, again, I say this in love, uh, I, I see where some allow uh, YouTube to determine what they think. Or I saw this guy on YouTube. This is what he said. Yeah, but that's not what the Bible says. Yeah, but he was on YouTube. <laughs> you know, if, okay, well. Or or a blog, or a podcast, or a book, or some news thing that, uh, that, that shapes their thinking instead of, well, what does God say in His Word? What does God tell us in His Word? We, we want to be disciples who listen to the Word, right? That was a soft amen. <laughs> that was, I'm, I'm not sure if I wanted to, you know.